Okay. First item on the agenda for the uh, work session uh, are uh, discussion topics for the 2017 General Assembly session. This was something that uh, Delegate Carl Anderton uh, requested. He said he would like to have an exchange between the council and, uh, and himself. So good to have you here tonight. Appreciate you taking the time. Right here's good. Good evening, everybody. Sorry, I don't have my back nearby. Sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Oh. Oh. Um, is this the Holloway wing of the table here? It's the Holloway side. All right. Mm -hmm. Right side. See, it's the right, right side of the table. It's, it's, it's left of me. It's, it's left of the hand. Oh, my gosh. So uh, the big question is, you know, with the TV, does it have cable or not? Oh, yeah. yeah we, okay, get, uh, we can get a lot of channels while... We're well, good. We have some guests. So can we have a special meeting on Super Bowl Sunday right in here? <laughs> It'll be right here. Everybody's for that, right? It'll be right here. If it's any good, I'm going to take that home with me to watch. Are you taking it home? <laughs> right? If you can get us some, a little bit of finance from the state. Well, we're going to talk about that. Uh, maybe not for wings, things maybe, like that. Maybe not for food, but, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, no, it's just a couple of things. I just kind of, as we, as we get ready to go in, um, you know, I wanted to uh, kind of let you know, you know what I'm hearing and what we may need. Sure. Uh, from you as we move forward this winter. Um, you know, the big priority for me is still how we use our revenues. Um, I totally get the, the significance of that. This county is short uh, nearly <laughs> 50 million mm -hmm. since the cut was made. And, uh, you know, Salisbury is 7 million and about, uh, about a million, million or so between Del Mar and Fruitland. So, I mean, you're looking at nearly 60 million taken out of the economy of the shore, uh, basically by a uh, pen stroke of the budget back in 2009 so you know and, and it's an interesting thing because the governor you know is fully committed to restoring it and the legislature wants to restore it but it doesn't seem to be the dots aren't connecting quite right so we're gonna we're gonna look into that a little more this year than we have before because now we're starting to kind of figure this out and so we can have a little more fun with it um, sprinklers uh, you know Senator Matthias and, and uh, Delegate Sample Hughes are, are gonna be resubmitting their their bill from last year. Uh, the bill passed the Senate, and it was up for final passage on the House floor when the clock strikes midnight. And in Annapolis, during session, when it hits midnight, whatever you're doing stops. And so it, it was on the board, and uh, before they could call the vote, it hit zero, and it triggered it, and it went away. And uh, so um, that was that was interesting, seeing something that you know was going to benefit your area. Kind of, you know, the clock ran out on it literally. Right. And uh, so, so that bill will be back. I'm sure that uh, that they'll be asking for some uh, some type of endorsement or help from the county with that bill presentation this year. Um, and as you know, uh, the governor um, really came through for us with the uh, the bat system repeal and and putting it back where it belongs in the critical areas instead of you know across the entire peninsula. What kind of resistance uh, do you think that'll? Have? I think we'll have. I hope I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is that somebody's going to submit a bill to try to put that back in place. Mm -hmm. And so if that does happen, you know, I'm, I'm praying it doesn't. But if it does, we're going to need a lot of help. Uh, you know, we're going to need some numbers to kind of signify the importance of, of anything we can do to help make it easier for somebody to live out their dream and build a home. Because it was, I mean, so, in reality, it was established through regulation. It wasn't really right. established through legislation. Right. right. And so since it was done through that process, it can be changed by the governor as well. But if it's done through legislation, then it has to be changed by legislation. And right. so, you know, as, as, and as much as uh, in the same fashion as the PMT, uh, you know, they had a bill. And for that, you know, we uh, we able to lobby successfully to, to allow it to be done through the regulatory process. It's much easier to have one person change something as they see whether or not it's, you know, a positive or a negative as opposed to getting it through, you know, two legislative bodies. Um, so that's something we're definitely going to be, you know, keeping our eye on. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, what I'm hearing is not true. Um, I, I would be pretty excited if somebody was messing with me about that bill. Um, you know, same thing with, uh, with our ag, with our poultry and our, our, uh, our farmers, you know, there'll be some, some legislation proposed once again this year. Um, 
you know, I've heard, you know, the usual suspects, the Poultry Litter Management Act, the chicken tax, but I heard uh, some discussion in the hallways about, um, you know, either the, the, can't, the state stepping in with, uh, with zoning or a state enacted moratorium. Uh, so, you know, these are things that are, uh, I don't, if it was sub submitted, I don't see it, you know, getting much success because I don't think then, the, you know, my folks, friends across the bridge will want us telling them, you know, what to do with their local zoning issues. I mean, we elected a county council for that reason. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that that's, that's the way it needs to be. Um, Budget stuff, in addition to how we use our revenues, I know the governor's gonna to try to do an increase. We're gonna fight really hard to make sure it stays there this year as opposed to last year where we lost the increase. Uh, it, it was it, during deliberations between the House and the Senate, there, were, there was some money taken and reallocated. So we're gonna to try to hope and work to make sure that doesn't happen uh, this year as well. Um, and my understanding is, you know, Purdue Stadium, the last piece of that funding is, is in the budget and then um, then we'll be finished there. And, um, uh, you know, I've been having conversations with the Maryland Stadium Authority about the Civic Center. I know that you have some, some plans and some ideas for things that need to be done there. So I've, I'm just constantly keeping our initiatives and our projects in their mind. And so when something does come up, it'll be an easy recall to say, oh, yes, you're right. We've been talking about this for a year now instead right. of starting from scratch. So, so we do that with projects from SU to uh, school construction. You know, I know we have West Salisbury underway and we're already talking about you know, other schools that I represent like Beaver Run and Del Mar and Fruitland as well. So right. just the more conversation we can have with folks I've come to learn, the better it is when you actually need something done because you know, it's, it can be uh, recalled rather quickly. So, okay. so uh, any questions? Um, you know what I, I found interesting about the fire sprinkler bill? The state of California was the only state in the union that had that ordinance that, that law. And then we come up and right. force it on the lo local jurisdictions. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's one of those things. Uh, you know, I, we came in kind of late on that. That was done before us. But, but from what I, I've heard, there were some counties in the state who had done it back in the 90s. And, and uh, so they kind of looked at it as, as a success for them. And so they went ahead and pushed it mm -hmm. statewide. And, and it's here now. And it's the counties that dictate so, what the rural districts do. It's those counties that <laughs> sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes we're pretty successful. But we're going to, you know, we're going to see if we can uh, do some way to offset. I mean, the goal, you know, that I've, uh, with most folks I've spoken with, you know, is, is home ownership. You know, mm -hmm. you, you want to have that place to establish roots. And, uh, you know, so we want to make sure that that's as affordable as possible. And uh, you guys did a great thing with the impact fees. I mean, that's, that's phenomenal, especially in this economy, to, to really go out like that, you know. We're so, able to do that. and, uh, you know, I know the governor uh, set up a program that, that uh, helps the priority funding areas. It's about 20% of the geography of the county for this particular year, for 2017, with some down payment assistance uh, and using the uh, the repeal of the impact fee as leverage against that so hopefully this year some folks that are moving into the urban core will be able to take advantage of that but we got to do something you know for folks who want to live you know out on Anacook Road or mm -hmm. you know or out out in the country you know so Councilman Kilmer um, well kind of along the lines of what Larry was saying that uh, you know there's there's already some counties that um, have a community college collective bargaining and I know there's right. a push to make that statewide which would really hurt Warwick and you know some of the you know Chesapeake College you know I mean right. it would really well, help absolutely. some of the rural ones so what, what I mean what are you hearing about that well that I mean uh, you know <coughs> I expect to see that bill again this year yeah. um, you know and I'm hoping that uh, you know we can we can continue to hold it at bay until um, until the economy catches up you know, to allow for it to happen. I mean, it's not something you'll be able to stop forever, but if we can stop it long enough that we can absorb it, you know, and, and uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think collective bargaining is necessarily a bad idea. I just think you would, should be able to, to be in a position economically where you can, where you can truly negotiate, you know, and, and, uh, and not have to, you know, uh, rob Peter to pay Paul, I guess, is a lack of a better term, you know, and, and so, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's sometimes difficult to explain, you know, the, 
our, the economy here on the Lower Shore, especially in Wicomico, uh, to my colleagues who live in Montgomery County and, and Howard County. I mean, it is two, two different worlds, uh, financially speaking, and so, but but we're getting there. You know, they're starting to understand that, you know, they think that, you know, the entire Eastern Shore is kind of like Ocean City and Northern Worcester County, and, and that's not, that's not the case. And so, uh, but we're making great strides. I mean, fortunately, we have an awesome governor, I think, who, who really has taken care of us. I mean, anytime I've needed any questions answered or anything, any help, uh, you know, he's been more than willing you know, to really look out for us on the shore. And I think it's, that's awesome to have that. Jim. Um, I've got a couple of things. Um, revenue shortfall, you know, I've been reading some of the mm -hmm. papers from the Annapolis area and, and what are you hearing about? What are you hearing about that? Well, I mean, that, that's, that's true. Uh, but it's, it's, um, it's one of those things that I, from what I've read and understood is, is when they make these spending projections, they kind of go with the highest number, you know, and so sometimes that's not what really happens. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like me when I want to lose weight. I say I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I lose three, you know. So I, I kind of overshot my estimate a little bit. Uh, so I think that's kind of what happens in these, in these committees. Uh, and so, um, you know, we didn't hit those projections, but I think we're in line with kind of where the governor expected us to be. Uh, so I, I'm expecting a little bit of an adjustment this year in, in spending, which is, which is okay. And, uh, but we also, you know, we got to remember that, you know, he has reduced some fees and some tolls. And so, you know, if there's more money, you know, in our pockets, there's going to be less in the state coffers. And that's, that's not a bad thing. So. Well, there's only one way to control spending. That's control how much you give them to spend, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the other thing um, is the Board of Ed is looking for a sort of like a guarantee or something to get their recent um, current project off the ground. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the county is kind of looking for a letter from the state as a kind of a guarantee that the funding will the be funding there. The funding will be there. Yeah. And, um, and I, I applaud the um, county executive for not bringing that to us without some kind of um, guarantee. Is there any chance of um, getting the state to move on that? So. We can certainly look into it. Okay. I mean, we, yeah, we can certainly look into it. If somebody will get, I guess it would be from the executive's department, mm -hmm. I guess, if they give mm -hmm. me some marching orders, we'll run up there and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll, we'll see if we can get something, you know. I mean, they'll either say yes or they'll tell us no. Yeah. Okay. And if you know, they say no, yeah. we'll ask why. Yeah, I don't think we yeah. should be uh, right. making a bridge loan without some kind of guarantee. That it'll no, I understand forward. that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 As anxious as they are. Sure. Yeah. So. Sure. No, and I know it, it. I mean, that school is a priority at the state level. Everybody talks about uh -huh. uh, that that situation with with West Salisbury. So it, I I don't see it being something too far out of reach that we okay. couldn't we couldn't do. Sounds good. So. Mm -hmm. Have you? Um, um, I know there's. I, I had read where there was a Justice Reinvestment Act. Yep. It came up. Um, how do you think that's going to play out? Because there's a lot of give and take. That. I think it's a very good effort. Absolutely. As far as what they're doing, there's Absolutely. some pros and cons to it. Yeah. I didn't know what your take was on that. I think it's a great start. I mean, it's yeah. going to be something that'll be liquid for a while, hopefully forever, that'll be constantly adjusted. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I think um, you know, instead of you know just throwing somebody behind bars, I mean, we need to, to give them an opportunity to be you know. A, a real member of society, you know. I mean, it's by the grace of God that I'm sitting at this table and not at some table up the street. So, right. um, yeah. <laughs> you know. No. So, right. But I mean, you know, it's just, you know, I, I think, you know, that, that we shouldn't be just housing people. We should be getting them ready to come out and, and contribute, you know, and get yeah. a second chance. I thought it made sense from a, a cost savings measure right. as far as really redirecting funds from. Uh, from the actual jails and incarceration right. to some type of um, uh, method of uh, recovery yeah. made a lot of sense. So. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, along, along, with, along those lines, I mean, there's going to be a big emphasis on the opioid issue right. here on the shore. And so, you know, we're going to need uh, we're gonna need help, you know, trying to support that legislation, whatever's proposed that we get our hands on. Um, that's a benefit for us here on the shore. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about it and we're trying to figure it out. We know we can't arrest our way out of it. You know, that doesn't work. Mm. Um, so, you know, we, we've, got to, we've got to find a way to, to collaborate public, pl publicly and privately together to, to get folks treatment. And then, I mean, the, 
I, I think, and maybe it's just me, but I think the best way is to make sure somebody has a job. You know, mm -hmm. if you're busy working, right. it's less time you got, you know, hanging out. And uh, so, but, you know, that's, that's a whole nother level. And we're, we're constantly looking at ways to improve and make ourselves, we're, I think we're a great place to live and a great place to hang out and play and grow, your, grow and, and build your family. But, you know, we have to become more attractive to, you know, people who want to start a business, people who want to expand, and people who want to relocate. That's the key, I think, is relocation. You know, I mean, we're so close to Delaware and Virginia, and, and we need to make sure that, um, you know, we're able to compete on all sides. And, but we're getting there. I, really, yeah. I feel it. We you are. can just feel it in the air when you're walking around. I, I don't know if it's just me um, with that three pounds I lost, but I just I feel it. You feel, the air feels lighter. I, I found yeah. it. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We, uh, we really appreciate you taking the initiative yeah, to come absolutely. here and to join us. Uh, you know, we always uh, we always work through Mako right. and a lot of initiatives that you're, yep. you're more than aware of. But uh, there are at times when Lecomico like, County itself has its own interests. Right. Um, I know over the last year there's a lot of communication back and forth where you know we we were to, I received calls from you saying yep. you know what does Lecomico County think about this right. you know bill that's that's trying to get through in Annapolis. And that's always good to get feedback because we don't always know exactly sure. what individual bills are, are going to impact us locally. And, uh, you know, with uh, delegates and senators there to sort of communicate right. those, um, those uh, warnings. Right. Uh, that's, uh, that's always a big plus so we can send letters of support right. um, and, if, if needed, testimony. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that this is just kind of the next uh, evolution in that. It's coming ahead of time saying, this is what I'm hearing. You know, hopefully this comes true and this doesn't come true. But just in case, I wanted, you know, so you could kind of develop your mindset uh, because things will be happening, you know, as, as you remember from last year. I mean, they're, they're really quick. Usually I'm mm -hmm. calling you out of breath oh, yeah. running and, <laughs> you know, I need a letter, but I needed it two days ago. Can I have it now type thing, you know, so. Right. But again, you know, you guys have been great. Every one of you answers the phone anytime I need anything, and I, I just think that's awesome. Delegate so, Anderton, thank you very yep, much. Absolutely. We appreciate your service. Yep. We'll see you soon. Good right, luck in the upcoming session. Second item on the uh, agenda for the open work session is the capital improvement program. Uh, Mr. Strasburg, I know you're not here completely for entertainment value. <laughs> Pleasure to see you. Evening again. Welcome back. Pleasure to see you again. Well, we received the total packet from you. We appreciate it. Thank you. I have the, um, have the department heads here this evening who uh, probably have the most uh, spending in line um, from inside the county general fund. So right. Okay. Happy to answer any questions you have or clarify anything that you need clarification on. Okay. Uh, I guess, um, I guess uh, as an overview, um, some things that I was looking at were um, the, the bigger picture mm -hmm. as far as our, our general obligation, indebtedness, mm -hmm. et cetera. I know that the um, projection for um, this fiscal year was originally 113 million, and it actually came in around 109 million. Um, I'm assuming maybe part of that was not so much not spending, but maybe um, a restructuring some of the uh, from the prior. Uh, monies, bonds, or anything to that effect? In terms of the debt load, John? Yes. In yeah. terms of the total debt, um, I could look into that for you and get back to you on that. Right. I can't give you an answer off the top of my head right sure. now. Sure. I just... Um, but I'd, I'd be happy to do that for okay. you. Okay. But the... Um, I always worry about whether or not how the debt service is and how sure. we're doing as far as, um, you know, what our um, total capacity is. And it looks like right now, and percentage-wise, we're about almost 51% of our total capacity right. based on 48% a couple of years ago. It's, to me, it's kind of going in the wrong direction, but I know, you know, there are some years we have to do some spending and some years we have to back off of those. Um, so, but overall, and, I think we're staying rather steady. And you may recall that, that, that our, um, our funding plan this year called for us not to borrow any more than what's being retired. In exactly. The year. So we'll keep, Actually, that ratio should improve um, because our, our base is going to improve. So I, I would see that percentage 
coming back in the right direction. Yeah, that's why I thought for the next year's projection of the, of the indebtedness, it was 120 <coughs> as opposed to 113, because I thought it would have been steady to, you know, with that number. But again, I, I, I don't want it to cut you off guard. No, sure. I, no, yeah. I can come back to you on that. That's yeah. fine. Okay. Questions from council members on particular items? And I've got a question. Sure. Um, the sheriff's office, the um, the money that was allotted in fiscal year 14 for the engineering study, have they done that? What's the status we have, on that? No, we haven't done, Larry, we haven't done the engineering study because okay. we haven't haven't located a, a site. That was my second question, a site. We haven't located a site at this point third, in time. Third question would be, um, is, are the plans for the current building once it's it would be evacuated. repurposed. You, any idea yet? No, not at I this know, point. I know time. we're always running out of space. So I understand it can be yeah. used. Because you'll notice in the CIP that we have money in the CIP for some some improvements to the current building. That's to keep the building in good condition. It's got right. you have to maintain it. It's got some roofing issues. It has some mechanical issues with heating um, heating and air conditioning. So we're trying to keep that existing structure in good condition, um, and it still has to be occupied right. for some period of time. Uh, but we have not yet located a site. We've looked at a couple, uh, but we haven't zeroed in on anything. So to start engineering right now, Difficult until you have purpose. a site, it's very difficult to start the engineering. Got gotcha. you. Uh, along that same line. Uh, with the sheriff, are you going to say something? Oh, no, 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 no. Grab your mic, John. Along, along that same line, did, did you uh, did you look at redesigning the uh, uh, building rather than just uh, say we need a new building? Yes. Okay. Nice answer. <laughs> uh, physically not possible, or uh, I wouldn't say that it's physically not possible, John, uh, but but the size of the building. Is is an issue, and and you recall when Lorraine was here, and we were talking about uh, the EMS system. Uh, we 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 really want some distance between the um, sheriff's facility and where our dispatch center is going to be located, for the very reason that you gave, Larry. Uh, we really anticipate keeping the current 911 center at the detention center and relocating the sheriff at a distance where if there was some sort of a catastrophic right. loss at corrections that it wouldn't be impacting or vice versa. Um, so establishing that distance is, is, right. and, and you've got is to good practice. You've got to understand that the sheriff's office, the building, has different needs because of the business Absolutely. that they're in. Absolutely. The, 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 and you'll see this with corrections as well. Over, over time, the, the design, size, and layout of law enforcement facilities and correctional facilities has changed for any number of reasons, not, not the least of which are f federal requirements. So to repurpose that existing building, uh, I'm not sure that it would really um, be wise forecasting the Sheriff's Department's needs over the next mm -hmm. 20, 30 years. I think they've outgrown it. No, I, no, they absolutely have. There's no question that they've had on it. Well, the, um, initially I know from, from what you've said here, and I remembered from last year, where the $25,000 was first proposed for study. Mm -hmm. And um, I had said, well, where is the study? And that's when everybody said, well, the study was never done. Um, so now we're talking about um, $100,000 for a study. And um, after the, or is there... It's, if in, la in last year, as I understand it, there was $100,000 proposed for a study. For the initial study. Okay. Right. And I don't believe that study is being done, but we're already suggesting that in this year's CIP, um, we look at a commitment of 600000 for an arch architectural and engineering study beyond an actual study to see if there's a need. So it, oh, it, no. it seems, I'm, I, unless I'm getting it wrong. Yeah, no, I, I think that we've established, John, that there is a need. 
Um, we, we, and remember, this is a planning document, so sure. the, the, the funds that we have um, aligned for each one of the years are planning funds. The, the, the 2018 numbers are probably the hardest numbers that we've got. Uh, we could anticipate that we would probably spend that money. But, I mean, quite frankly, until, until I, we have a site that's appropriate, it's very hard to go much further. But we don't want to be in a position where we have a site and then we don't have the funding available now to move ahead very rapidly um, or expeditiously with the civil engineering and the building design. Well, so it, it, it's... I, and I understand it makes, good, it makes perfect sense. Uh, my, the only concern that I had is in establishing this, this new you know, five-year plan right. uh, for 2018, uh, the very first item on the agenda is the $600,000 for an architectural and engineering study, but we seem to have cast aside the $25,000 study, and then now it appears as if we've cast aside the $100,000 study. I'm not a fan of studies to begin with. No, no remember, we, 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 the, money, the money that is in the money that, that is in the plan from previous years is still in the plan and available. So it isn't as though that money not being spent is a problem. Spending the money when you don't have a longer term plan is a problem. So again, until we have a site that we believe meets the sheriff's department's needs and other criteria, we don't want to be spending the hundred thousand dollars that we had in the plan last year because why well, would we spend that money? I understand, and I I, I agree with you. I, again, I I'm not a, I'm not a fan of studies at all, but it appears as if from the way I'm reading it this year that it's been decided that there's going to be an $11 million commitment to a building, which seems somewhat arbitrary without, a, without any type of study or structure in place beforehand. Well, no, what we did, okay, now I understand where you are. <laughs> it takes me a while to get it, to get it across. <laughs> I understand where you're, no, actually what we did, the, uh, the manner in which we arrived at the, the estimated $11 million was basically to go back to the city's police department building and we looked at the at the architecturals on that building mike liked that building believes that it's a good layout we had those costs at the time we took those plans right and we updated those plans for today's costs that's where the 11 million dollars comes from okay it's a it's a it's a best guess right now based right. on a building that the sheriff believes would suit his needs. Now that's a two-story building. I don't know that we would build a two-story building. That's site dependent. Mm -hmm. uh, but but that's how we arrived at that. Okay, number. good. Yeah, I'd rather do spend, that. I'd rather do that and spend a hundred thousand no, dollars to come to the same conclusion. No, we didn't, no kidding. No, we didn't spend yeah. that money. And right. and we're looking for sites ourselves. We haven't hired anyone to look for sites for. So again, until until we have that site uh, that that meets the sheriff's parameters and we're not spending hard dollars yeah but we're planning that if we find that site and council approves that site and we're happy with the acquisition of it that we're not held up for another fiscal year to really start the heavy lifting mm -hmm. i would hope we would try to find something that we already own so we wouldn't have to buy more land that would be the land ideal that we already own if we could find something that we already own it would be Ideal. If we could. If we could. Yeah. I just Matt. have two, two comments. Uh, one was a just a question on the layout here. You've got under general services three health department projects, um, two of them for the Portal Health Department, one of them for the Fritz building, and then health department has its own subheading. Is that because it's building maintenance versus what what we've done and and let me explain that that's a very good point I have what, the same what, question what we've done is that we we have we believe that it's appropriate that the investments in any county owned building 
be shown under general services because the county is responsible for the maintenance of that structure in the major systems. So what, what you're seeing under general services is just that. If the county owns the building and it needs either made, you know, structural work, roofing, major systems, we've captured that under general services. You recall that when I gave you the, the, the overview on the CIP, I mentioned that we have the county um, general services department or department people um, assessing every one of the county owning, owned buildings so that we have that uh, consolidated in one place and can prioritize those needs in one place as opposed to each department doing its own thing with the building that it's housed in. Those, those, those other requests under health, Matt, are more um, interior. Health systemic, yeah, you know, they're virtual, um, you know, wiring, that type, you know, that type of thing. So those are things that are transportable from one building to another as opposed to things that are not. It's the best way I can explain it. And now the other comment I had was I'm, I am happy to see the West Side Collector Phase 3 on there for completion. Mm -hmm. so that's good. You know, we already bought the property. It's good to go ahead and get that finished. No. no. <laughs> there. Um, the um, Board of Ed CIP 1 through 5 priority listing, is that in the plan to fund the, the yes. nearly $8 million? Refresh my memory, is that going to um, cause the uh, maintenance of effort to be higher next no. year? No, it has no impact okay. on maintenance of effort. Mark? Um, I've got a couple questions about the Purdue Stadium thing. Why am I not sure? It's kind of like hobby horse here. So yeah. <laughs> we tossed a coin. He, he won. Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got Larry sitting, me, sitting next to me here. So, yeah. you know, you know, I know he, you know, I'll yeah. balance it out. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, so in last year's CIP, it talked about in 2015, it had, I think, $1.58 million. Was that money that the county was supposed to have spent last year? Because I don't see it on noted in this year's CIP. Um, I'm going to I'm going to have Steve Steve Okay. Yeah. Steve I'm going to have Steve come up to okay. walk you through All right. that whole spending plan. Okay. All right. Yeah, cuz there's there's no, numbers are different than last year. So, Understood. yeah. Okay. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He can walk you through the reasoning for it. All right. Sure. So the question is about the 1.58 million from the county. Yeah, and two, I guess that was 2015, I see, from last year's. Yeah, that money, are you asking what's happened with that money? Or yeah. It's in the process of being spent right now. We're doing the uh, seat replacement, okay. uh, video board replacement, and the structural phase two. Okay. Um, so, cause then it just says 400000 right on, on this year's CIP, so that um, in, in... For Purdue? Yeah, for, for 2015. Okay, so for the for last year's CIP, mm -hmm. it had one point five eight million. Correct. Okay. And for two thousand fifteen, this year that number is now four hundred thousand. On in this year's CIP for two thousand fifteen, that number's changed. Okay, I'm I'm not familiar with okay. the old CIPs as far as that goes, but okay. I I could speak to um, okay. the current funding. All right, and <clears throat> and then you know now it's one point three million dollars for this coming year. Correct. Okay. So how much? Ha has our total number changed then? I mean, you know, because the, these are shifting numbers from last year to this year, it seems to yeah, be. Yeah, the total project is outlined in the 20-year lease agreement, and that has not changed. The, the 1.3 for next year, the bulk of that is the state funding that Delegate Anderton spoke of. Uh, it's 980, I believe. Okay. Um, 200 of that, at the time that we wrote this, 200 of that comes from the franchise, which is in the agreement. Um, we may recoup some of that this year, but but in that plan, that's 200, and and the only thing we're asking from the county for next year is is 120,000. Okay. And that that has not changed from the beginning. The the okay. original commitment. Um, we're just going to finish that out with the with the 120. All right. So when it says an additional request to the county of 120,000, that's not you mean that's just additional for FY18, Correct. not additional on top of no. the. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's just to complete right. what the original. Okay. That's a right. change in the cash flow. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that alleviates some of my confusion. Right. And so, but the roof, the, the additional the funding for the roof, roof is additional that's new. separate. Yes. Okay. That's new. I know we, we've already talked about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, that's, 
Yeah, that, that's all for. That's all for that bargain. Yeah, it seemed like we sat and spent an awful lot of time on the the lease um, and, and how we were going to make plans for the next twenty years, um, and this came up as well. I'm surprised that this wasn't part of that whole process, unless I'm missing exactly how it's supposed to go down. Are we talking about the roof, John? Yes. Yeah. As as I said at the um, at the introduction and in the overview. This is why we've tasked general services to do a comprehensive analysis of every single county-owned building, and the stadium is a county-owned building. Right. We, 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 should have, we should have known that that roof uh, was nearing the end of its, of its useful life. However, I would tell you that the... the 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 shorebirds would look at that at the building itself at the structure itself and say look that's a county owned facility you know the 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 franchise is going to pay for those things that that are or is going to help pay for those things that are franchise related the playing field the seats you know the scoreboard but the franchise itself in pro sports they're not going to participate in the cost of the of maintaining the structure itself. Again, it almost falls under the general services category. It really falls under general services, and, and um, I, I will admit and I will say that the county, we should have been ahead of the curve on that. This $700,000 should not have come as a surprise to us. It unfortunately did, and... Um, that's why we're, again, um, expediting as best we can comprehensive surveys of all of our buildings. We can't, we just can't have these kinds of surprises. Right. We have to, 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 prevent we have this to plan from, better than that. To prevent this from happening again, how often will general services be doing their analysis of all the buildings in the county? We would, we would, be, we would be reviewing that on Is it going to be annual, scheduled? It's going to be. It would be on an annual basis, Larry. We would get our baseline, yes. and we would plan for uh, those things that we believe need to be done. We would incorporate that into the CIP mm -hmm. or into the departmental operating budgets because some things would be done in the course of, of routine maintenance. But but we have to have we have to have a baseline. What our needs are, how we fill that gap as expeditiously as we can mm -hmm. and make it affordable. But then how do we prioritize that annual operating spending as well? Because again, um, to, to some extent, uh, the, the squeaky wheel's been getting the grease. Those departments that have really been on top mm -hmm. of their buildings and their systems have, have come forward in past years and said, hey, you know, we really need to, to be addressing this. This is gonna be a problem. And we've made it a priority within that department. But what we need to be doing is standing back and looking at it systemically and saying, okay, how does that stack up in terms of priorities across the county with the resources we have? And further, um, we should be looking at it on a systems basis. In other words, if we're looking at roofing, you know, if we have roof needs across the county, we shouldn't be addressing those <coughs> onesie twosie, we should be bringing in roofing contractors or consultants and saying, you take a look at the needs that we have, that we believe we have for the coming coming year mm -hmm. or the coming planning cycle, and we'll get better costs and we'll get better quality that way as opposed to, to patchworking it. Right. And to some extent, we've been patchworking, and we need to change that. I agree. The... Um also, with the modernization, uh, th there is a notation here that in fiscal year, 1.3 million will be funded, and then it says this is an additional request to the county of 120,000, which is about 10 percent difference there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what Can you explain that? Yeah. What happened there, Steve? Um, <clears throat> so what happened was um, in the 20-year lease agreement, uh, the state and the county agreed to split 50-50 as 2.025 million dollars. Um, the project, in addition to that, also had $120,000, which was the clubhouse renovation. That was the very first phase. Mm -hmm. That was not part of the 2.025. That was already spent. So we haven't technically done our, our full 
2.025. That money was spent with the clubhouse renovation. So the 120 is just to fulfill that obligation of the 50-50 split with uh, the county and the state. Okay. Did that answer yeah, your question? I, okay. I remember, I, I believe yeah. I remember that discussion came up when we were okay. talking about the leasing. Yeah, yeah. so, so what, what's outlined in the lease agreement, um, we're not going beyond that other than the roof that what we've talked about here. Any other questions uh, in reference? No. Um, the um, seems like we got a lot of state grants. I mean, it could be it could be just another year. Is this um, are, are we seeing more state grants coming in? Because there's so many projects that were coming in for rec and parks, and I thought, boy, we're deciding to spend an awful lot of money on rec and parks. No offense. It's worth it. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now those, but, st those state grants are mm. are fairly they're fairly typical. Um, in, in terms of state grants as a whole, you're right, John, the, the, the you know, state grant funding is, is, is declining. It's not increasing. But we feel very confident about the grants that we've embedded in the, uh, in the CIP. Good. Uh, if the, and if the grant doesn't come through, the project doesn't launch. And it was okay. It was, it was good to see a state grant paying for a large part of the Shoemaker Park parking lot repair. That's that's a mess there. Yeah, so it that's, is. Yeah, that's, I was yeah, glad to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, but yeah, seventy-two thousand dollars, you know, by the state and eight thousand by the county. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's not bad. Yeah. That park's used a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. And and of course that will have handicap access. Yes. Right. Yes. Now the um, the one I I wasn't aware of and kind of wanted some information on was the Cedar Hill Park rental cabins and bathroom renovations. Sure. Um, just kind of curious as to what was, um, you know, the funds would, uh, I'll read it so that the public's sure. aware. A uh, new project for uh, 2019, totaling 105,000, uh, the funds would purchase and install small one bedroom rental cabins at Cedar Hill Marina. And additionally, the project would renovate the existing bathrooms that have uh, foundation issues and update the sinks, et cetera. Um, so, and the bathroom portion is 75,000. So the total funding would be from County Pago. Um, I was curious as to, as far as the small one cabin rental cabins, what, can you enlighten me as what, what we're planning to do there? Um, the idea was to, to make it a, a possible overnight attraction for folks if they wanted to, to rent a cabin and either uh, go out on their boat or, or just make that another tourism attraction. But as far as the, the bathroom facility goes, if we were to do that kind of overnight activity there, it's really not sufficient at this moment. Uh, the current building, the foundation is beginning to sink a little bit. We're, we're seeing some cracks in, in the walls. So that, regardless of what we do there, needs at some point to be addressed. But um, the idea of the cabins was, was something we had talked uh, with the executive's office about um, mm -hmm. to allow for some overnight stays there. I, I, I love the idea of cabins. Sure. I think that's, that's really a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't understand as far as the new project totaling 105,000, you've got about 75 going for the bathroom portion. That leaves about 30,000 for the cabins. I'm wondering how many one bedroom rental cabins you can get for $30,000. <laughs> well, this, this is upscale. I didn't realize <laughs> that. Does it have running water? But I was curious if it's suggested here that the whole total project is 105,000. Yeah. I didn't get the numbers on on the cabins. I, yeah. I like the idea. I just don't understand how it's being done that cheaply. Yeah, and and quite honestly, they would probably with the with the bathroom facility, they wouldn't be well outfitted as far as cabins go. They would be probably one room. Uh, the idea would be folks would be probably on their boat the majority of the day. They would use it for sleeping accommodation, so they'd be fairly modest. But um, those numbers are, are a ballpark target at this point. We could look further into that. Well, since this is FY19, this yeah. is not, I mean, Correct. this is something that's, right. that's going to be flushed out over the course yes. of the next year. Yeah. It's a planning number. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but so, I, I was just curious. I mean, yeah, like no, I said, no. I really like the idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, didn't, I was curious as to how many cabins everybody was thinking about in this long-term planning and the funds just were a little curious to me. It seemed a little bit of love. Sure. So. How do you, this is, I guess, a discussion for next year maybe, but how do you see it actually facilitating somebody pulling up by boat and being able to use these cabins? Will, will it be a locking combination on the doors? Will you have to get in touch with somebody? Mm -hmm. Just just well, wondering logistically how. We went to Edgewater Rail and looked at uh, camp. Hey, Bob. Grab the mic, pal. Sure. Sorry. <coughs> yeah, Camp Letts. Camp Letts. Up, uh, up Edgewater. And a lot of those cabins were basically the same type of cabins you would see at James Island State Park, 
One bedroom's just efficiency, maybe just a light bulb in them, mm -hmm. and that would be it. Um, the other part being the fact that what we'd hope to do is to, to bring people down, almost like the tiny houses, mm -hmm. to bring people down that where we could get them to stay, rent, throw in a slip for, for three or four days, whatever they stay. We have a lot of people from Pennsylvania come down here and do fishing in the bay, that type of thing. So they'd be able to bring their boat in. We would, we would limit a couple slips that we could you know, offer that as part of the rental part of it. So okay. enticement. Right. And um, talk to them. I've also talked to MTA about taking some of the old MTA buses out of Baltimore and making them tiny houses, the cottages. <laughs> uh, they, they will give us the buses if we can find somebody that knows how to, to, to remodel the inside of them. So, um, but that's, you know, that's all those kind of ideas with the tiny houses, the cabins at James Island State Park. Uh, same thing we're going to be working with, with uh, Pirates Cove that uh, Judith Stribling's office, our uh, group would like to do, to put like overnight stays within the forest. Yeah, and I think Councilman Holloway was asking who's going to come unlock it and who you're going to pay and so forth. Yeah, that was that was kind of my point. It was just logistically because yeah. there's nobody permanently down at Cedar Hill. Well, so there, we there is not that anybody. Yeah, that's just going to be probably come through by and get the office or yeah. you know, get the key and go down there. Okay. And, uh, we would have to arrange that. It there's not going to be a whole lot of cleanup. Sweep it out and that's right. it. Yeah. It, right. it would give Mr. Strasburg something to do. Though. <laughs> it would be, uh, you know, man, the rental house. We'll go right from retirement out of you know, director of administration to uh, cabin <laughs> manager. Just make sure you have screens on the doors. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any mosquitoes down our way. You got them, right? We send them your way. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a, that was my question. Sure. So I was glad to see that. So, any other questions no, for uh, I, Mr. I Miller? I like the idea. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. You are doing a great job. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, getting back, uh, I know Matt had said he was glad to see the West Side Collector uh, Phase 3 being put in here. Uh, uh, I think everyone's glad to. Councilman Kilmer, did you say that you were glad to see the Barron Creek Road restoration in the project in here? I believe. I think my view on that's pretty clear. Yes, yeah. So we're glad to see that in here as well. Um, the um, corrections, a lot of money being spent on corrections, George. I just. <laughs> I think so. oh. <laughs> the uh, only other thing that I had was that with um, with Warwick Community College, the uh, Manor Tech and Hazel Student Centers. I'm, I'm assuming uh, was it just decided at this time that any any renovations or improvements there were just off the table for a while? Yeah, Ray pushed that out. Mm -hmm, okay. We did that at his request. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, any other questions from anybody? Uh, all right. Well, good. We. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time. Look sure. forward to moving forward with this. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Let me find out where I'm on the agenda here, folks. Uh, second item on the agenda is the uh, watershed improvement plan. Uh, Mr. Young. Saving the best for last. Appreciate you coming and take the time. Uh, I, you know, I thought it would be good for the, the, the council to, to get a full understanding of what's involved in the WIP program. I know that, that it comes across our table occasionally here, some of the issues, um, and I know we certainly hear a lot about it when we go to MAKA. Yes. And um, I just thought it might be good to get an overview um, you know, as far as where we are with the WIP program, uh, where the state of Maryland is with it, sure, and how everything you know, is coming into play over the next year. Sure. Um, so just as a brief background, there's a lot of acronyms with the WIP. Um, it's the Chesapeake Bay Pollution Diet, or the TMDL. Um, this was an effort to clean the Chesapeake Bay. Um, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation sued the EPA. It went all the way to the Supreme Court, and it was determined that based on the Clean Water Act, not, not sufficient um, efforts were being made to clean uh, the bay for three main contaminants, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. Uh, these contaminants, two of which are fertilizers, uh, can cause algae blooms or um, keep sunlight from getting down to the uh, submerged aquatic vegetation that cause shellfish loss. Um, you know, so, so crab and oysters and all of that have, have suffered. Um, a depletion of oxygen in the water. There's a host of, uh, I'll say, beneficial issues with excess nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment getting into the bay. So the federal government, through the EPA, went to each state and said, you need to develop what they call the Watershed Implementation Plan. 
this is the whip that we affectionately call it here. And, and you, um, to interrupt you very quickly, you said the federal government, actually this was something that was done um, pretty much through executive order. Yes, Pre and, President Obama was, was involved with this as well and it, it was due to a lawsuit over the Clean Water Act. Right. Um, so each state was told to put together their own, what well, they called it the phase one watershed implementation plan. So these phase one whips were developed by the state. Um, there are six states and the District of Columbia have some portion of uh, their drainage area, their land mass draining to the bay. So each state was told, put together a plan as to how you will, re you will clean up the bay, how you will reduce the nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. Uh, the states in turn went to each locality, each municipality, and asked the same question. How, how you know, please put together one of these whips. Uh, it was known as the phase two whip. So they went to the counties. They said, uh, and larger cities, depending on like Baltimore, was held separately than Baltimore County. Um, and in our case, Salisbury was, was cut out of uh, Wicomico County in terms of the response. So we put together, and, and a lot of this was handled um, wonderfully by the planning and zoning um, department. And they put together this, this whip that said, these are some ideas that they're not set in stone. These are, these are how we believe the county will react um, and, and address this. Now, uh, one thing to consider is that they break the efforts into four main sectors. Um, there is the urban stormwater, and that's where we tend to spend most of our time. There is wastewater, so all the wastewater treatment plants are, are upgrading to enhance nutrient removal such that they are removing more nitrogen and phosphorus from what's being discharged um, into the various water bodies. When you say we, are you talking collectively as the collectively, county and the city? Yeah, yeah collectively, the yes. All, all, the, all the wastewater sectors, um, all the treatment plants in Maryland, okay. um, Virginia, and the other states. Okay. Um, there are the septic sector, so all the individual septics, and then there's agriculture. Now right now, the only sector in Maryland that's looking to meet its goals is the ag sector. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've had uh, nutrient management plans for some times, and, and Maryland agriculture has been ahead of the curve in a lot of right. cases. Um, urban stormwater is where we tend to focus our energies the most. Um, we are looking at, uh, from a septic standpoint, what bat systems do go in do help the county slightly um, with old neighborhoods with failing septics if we were somehow able to either connect them to a municipal system or have some sort of community system um, like a package treatment plant like a smaller version we could possibly help cut that septic load down a little bit um, so these are things that you know we we would like to um, pursue uh, plans for just to see is it feasible is it economically feasible similar to the lighting district I talked about previously we could do some sort of um, you know sewer district if if a neighborhood is, is has enough failing septics to warrant something like that right. um, but going back to urban storm where, water where we spend most of our time um, as you're aware having the CIP conversation recently um, the county's been investing at least $200,000 a year in the CIP um, in some of the public works and through um, some of the drainage monies in the roads uh, division of public works, additional monies have gone towards these uh, WIP projects. So the WIP project is typically, um, I'll say the most basic form you can think of is a stormwater pond. Putting in a stormwater pond um, to help treat water before it goes into a river or a creek and, and things like that. So from there, um, we look to install these WIP projects across the county. Ideally, we focus on publicly owned land so there's no land acquisition cost. Um, and then we also look for the biggest bang for the buck. So we're looking right. for how much impervious surface, so that's a harder surface where the water cannot infiltrate into the ground. That means rain that hits it's going to run off that can cause erosion that can wash off um, say brake dust or, or oil hydrocarbons dripping from vehicles not being maintained properly um, and then that can get into our waterways so by putting in a pond or some of these other structures um, which I think later 
I could give a presentation when the TVs are operational where, where I can show photos of some of these and what we're doing within the county because the picture speaks a thousand words. Um, but these WIP projects go in and then with each project we estimate how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment is being removed by this. Mm -hmm. um, what we then want to do as well as we're, as we're looking at these projects is we look at what is the total cost and then what is the equivalent cost per pound removed. So what does it cost us to remove a pound of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment, respectively? Mm -hmm. So um, where, where we are is we've had about $800,000 um, given so far through this CIP process, and we've leveraged almost $900,000 in grant monies. So for what money the county's been given, it started with planning and zoning, and now Public Works is, is running with it um, with with uh, backup support from planning and zoning. Who's doing the Who's doing the grants? Does it come from DNR or where does it come it, from? It It varies. Mm -hmm. um, some of these grants are not consistent, so that's why we. It's hard. It's hard for us to put them in the budget to say we we anticipate getting this grant. Mm -hmm. um, a part of it. Sometimes uh, Governor Hogan provides more money. Um, it's a mix, uh, mm -hmm. primarily state and federal governments, uh, or st state and federal grants are available. Um, one in particular that we've done well with is the Chesapeake Bay Trust. Um, I think that's through license plate sales through Maryland and Virginia and has to be in one of those two um, Bay states. Um, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, uh, NIFWIF, is a uh, wonderful donor as well. Uh, University of Maryland has an environmental finance center, so so there's options out there, and it and the Bay cleanup effort is recognized um, as an issue. So there's there's a lot of money on the table, and we've been leveraging it as as best we can. What what we've been given going forward. Um, one of the things that we are looking at pursuing, and we have a potential grant available for that, is doing a watershed study. Now this is paying a consultant um, to look at a portion of the county and say where can we put these practices to get this, the biggest bang for the buck. Right. Historically, we've, we've gone for the cheapest option. All right, what are the public properties um, so we don't have the land acquisition costs and also make it visible. So, so try to get some education out there. So we, we have some at Pemberton Historical Park. We have one um, at the Upper Ferry. Um, we've installed two recently at uh, the larger public works facilities at Solid Waste and at Rhodes. What do you have at Upper Ferry? So there's a small bioretention. Okay. Um, and there, there should be a sign out there. So if you're, if you're stuck waiting for the ferry to, to return, um, you can read about some of the, the wetland grasses planted. Um, we put some at our, uh, the Solid Waste and Rhodes facilities, so these large sections of impervious surface that have you know, various trucks and equipment on it, they're now being drained to a water quality um, practice before it leaves the site. So initially, I know, I know you two guys can remember that, and John, um, initially it was in the millions, and you know, in some counties it was billions of dollars as far as what the state was going to force Forced the counties to do, and of course, the ten largest counties were the first ones that were impacted. Yes. Since then, they've it's set back an awful. I mean, it, they've stepped back an awful lot on this. Mm -hmm. um, what are we seeing as far as our obligation locally? I mean, we could possibly do absolutely nothing, but uh, you know, I think it's important to continue on in those efforts. But how do we see it as far as the pressure in the long term in, in achieving those goals and costs? That that's a great question. Um, Right now, the way the, um, the way the process works is we submit a two-year milestone. And right. I believe I, I had that uh, one of our latest ones, just kind of like the whip. It's, it's, a, it's soft language to say we will look at these things, we will pursue these things. And the state takes all that, aggregates that. So Maryland does this, Virginia does this, um, Pennsylvania and so forth. And then they present it to the EPA and say, this is what we are doing. Um, the EPA has been grading the various states, and wh where I'm going with this is that Wicomico County showing the efforts we've made, showing that we have a lot of shovel-ready projects and we're getting grant monies to fund it, um, we're showing we're making due diligence towards meeting our goals. 
we are, we are doing efforts. There are some areas, namely um, the, the, I'll say the, the state that's sort of um, being held to the fire right now is Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah. they yeah, are, yeah. you know, the, they're talking about doing a similar phosphorus management type tool um, right. and, and what, they're, what they're doing, um, it has not been sufficient to date. So what, what I feel is gonna happen at first is that they're gonna focus on the people who are doing little to nothing and release what regulatory hammers they have. Right. Um, currently- Depending with the new administration, what happens as well. Yes. Yeah, right. um, the, the, and on that, um, what would have to change ultimately is the Supreme Court ruling to upheave the entire effort. Um, on, on the upside, what has been done to date has shown measurable progress in water quality tests. So, so it seems like the efforts being made are, are moving in the right direction. Um, a lot of money has gone into treatment plant upgrades because that's, that's a big, big ticket item. Um, you know, there's arguments as to, and, and that goes back to the uh, BAT system repeal, um, a septic tank far away from any water body, is, is that nitrogen reaching that water? That, that's a question that's, that's to be answered. Um, but from an urban stormwater standpoint, the, the denser the area is, the more impervious surface they have, the more pollutants they have leaving their sites. Um, they have less groundwater replenishment. So there's, there's emphasis on, um, I, I wanna say reducing impervious, not completely removing it. A good example of what we've we've tried to do here is like with the San Domingo, um, was it the Teen Adult Center that was demoed? Um, we will be planting trees on that parcel, and that land use conversion from impervious surface and open space to trees is actually um, we can count towards the bay cleanup effort. So one of the things we look at, not just going out and doing a whip project, is um, what other projects are there out there that we could add a water quality element to? Um, Didn't you suggest that with the, with the Barron Creek issue? Yes, yeah, so Barron, Barron Creek has, has opportunity as well with the old pond bottom to um, do stream restoration and, and other efforts there. Um, typically what we try to do, and I mentioned the roads division earlier, if we have a area of flooding concern, we try to look, can we add a water quality element to that when we fix that flooding issue? So it's a lot of, instead of just going out and putting in a bioretention or one of these um, WIP projects, it's, all right, we have something going on, can we put something in? If we find the public safety building where the sheriff's office is now, if we see that you know it was built in a low-lying area, if we can put in a practice that catches the water before it gets to the building, then we can do that and then we can claim water quality treatment in addition to solving, say, surface water getting getting underneath the building. So yeah, then you wouldn't need a new sheriff's office. Uh, no no comment on that. Uh, <laughs> but um, so yeah, it's 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 an effort of trying to with the money we have, trying to use it as efficiently as possible, trying to leverage it to get additional grant monies because it, that's that's a hot item right now. And um, yeah, and then with through through watershed studies, we can help identify some larger areas, Barren Creek or any of our dams. If we we're able to put in wetland benches, you have significant drainage areas in to the tune of square miles coming to a location. If you can treat all that in some format, that will be a larger price tag project that we're not quite ready to put in the CIP yet. But well, we could maybe, as you said. Um it's it's happened to bring in funding from other areas as well. Yes. So to a certain degree, with the Barren Creek, if we were to, you know, wrap it up in uh, as a whip project, there could be maybe funds from other sources. Correct. To help offset oh, those costs. Totally, totally. And and the bigger the projects, typically the efficiency is improved. So these these granting agencies are willing to give more money to a project that rem removes nitrogen at a thousand dollars per pound versus fifty thousand dollars per pound. Yeah. So. Yeah. Weston, how does the state determine where we stand on the WIP programs? Right now, it's, it's uh, I say, all on paper. They've developed a model. Um, there's, there's a, I'll say, federal-level model 
and then the state has a has a separate uh, program to help determine that. So what we go in and we enter into this program, um, how many types of WIP projects or BMPs, best management practices. So it'll be how many ponds, how many bioretentions, how many wetlands and so forth, uh, engineered wetlands. And then what is the drainage area going to each or impervious surface going to each? And then that will put out a number. So what we do is we have to enter all that information. So we keep track of what BMPs we have in the county, public and private, and we need to make sure that they're being maintained. So if they're, if they're overgrown and not working, we, we can't count those, um, which we're, we're, we're doing fairly well in that category. So um, <clears throat> yeah, we, we basically enter these into the program and then the state takes that and adds it to their state data um, but how they determine what we need to clean up is based on land use. So they ran this model some time ago and this year they're supposed to run it again. So we're all sort of waiting on um, what the latest results will be um, and then see how, how that changes things. Well, the county last couple of years has been 20% ahead of the goals that have been set by the state. Um, in recycling, yes. <laughs> um, in um, the, the Bay cleanup effort, it's, it's a bit harder to gauge, and that was one of the questions I had when I, when I first came back to the county, was, was where are we in meeting, meeting our goals? And that's something I think we're, we're still working through, and you know, by, by proposing bigger projects, let's say Barron Creek as an example, how does that help us get taking a large chunk of, of our, what they call the waste load allocation, um, the, the amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment we're asked to remove. So um, yeah, that I think a more comprehensive presentation in a few months could be helpful sure. as, as we pull that information and then hopefully uh, with the TV running, we could do some, some photos and stuff to help um, explain all that. That'd be great. Um, yeah. uh, where does, um where do we stand compared to some of the other local counties? Are they keeping up like they should? Do we monitor what they're doing? Um, you know, some of them are probably more sensitive to the bay than we are, like Dorchester County. And yeah, so, yeah, there's, I would say from a grant standpoint, we're, we're well above any of the sister counties. Um, with when you look at like Worcester and you have Ocean City, which is urban, but that drains to the ocean. So so that's not part of the bay cleanup effort, whereas every part of Wicomico drains to the bay. So we have to look countywide, whereas Worcester can look at just the portion that's draining to say the Pocomoke. Um, so with that, um, yeah, we're, I, I think we're, we're ahead of the game, at least compared to our neighbors. Good. So going back to um, the EPA focusing on Pennsylvania right now, from the Maryland level, they're more likely to focus on a county that's not pulling their weight compared to one that's at least showing due diligence. You we know, the state. The, the, yeah, the state. state yeah. But, but then again, the, the EPA has, has been known to come pay visits to localities, especially if they feel the state's not carrying, carrying their weight. But we're pretty much on a voluntary pro, uh, plan because I mean we're not one of the ten major counties in, in Baltimore that was that was first directed to come up with the yes. TMDLs. It's been very voluntary on on the count on part of like Comico and the other smaller counties, right? For now, right. Um, they have a permit program we call the another acronym MS4. It's the Municipal okay. Separate Storm Sewer System. Those bigger counties in, say, Baltimore City or a phase one, the phase one is the big one, typically over 100,000 people, there's density requirements and all that. And that is, um, that is the regulatory hammer the state and the EPA have to make those counties and city do what, what they want. Um, phase twos tend to be a smaller regulatory permit. Um, the city of Salisbury is under a phase two now and their whole, um, I believe they collect their stormwater money as part of the um, water and sewer bill. Yeah. Um, so that's how they're funding their program. I don't think it's mandated as to um, how they collect their money 
and I'm not fully up to speed on that. However, the the requirements based in the phase two permit almost dictate that they collect some money for that. Um, there, we, we don't have enough information to fully talk about it now, but parts, the more urban parts of Wicomico, the state is looking at putting us under a phase two MS4 permit. That would then give the state the regulatory hammer to make sure we are doing these WIP projects and, and so forth. So that, that's something that um, as, as we get more information and the public comment period and all of that, we will forward that on. Okay. Um, so and the yeah. questions. Have you looked at Worcester County or Somerset to see how they do their water sewer districts? Um, in terms of water and sewer districts, um, not yet. We, we, we haven't been necessarily focused on that 100%. I saw where Worcester just approved um, more campsites at that, uh, well, not Frontier Town, but Selbyville, mm -hmm. that campsite, and, and it had something to do with the water system, okay. water and sewer. Worcester kind of backed their way into a county authority. Yeah, well, one of the things, and the, there's a state law on the books that community systems um, have to be, I guess, can be given to the county to maintain. Now, the county can give that to a third party, and like Maryland Environmental Services right. is one that'll do it. Contracts. You could create a county water and sewer authority or sewer authority, either one. That's um, why when we did Village Down River, we specifically did it that way with the anticipation that maybe at some point in time yes. you might want to go third, uh, further. And we actually met with Worcester County and Somerset County to see exactly right. how they structured their system. Yeah, and, and depending on one of one of the I'll say one of the benefits of having an organization like that is if you have multiple treatment plants and say one isn't quite cutting it in nitrogen, but you have another plant or multiple plants that are over treating in terms of nitrogen, sometimes they allow a balancing. So they look at your average and say, All right, overall you're doing well, we're not gonna hammer that one treatment plant. Whereas if that was your only treatment plant, they could say you know, you're, you're um, not meeting your regulations, therefore, you know, here's a consent order. What do you favor? Do you favor individual um, treatment centers or do you, like, do you favor the decentralized system? I think it comes Two. down to economics. Um, in, in some cases, uh, centralized helps, but it costs, you know, every, the further you stretch it, you need more pump stations, and that means more chances for overflow, more equipment to maintain. Um, at a certain Unless point, back to the really old, old system of trucking it back and forth, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and that goes back to to uh, costs. You know, yeah. you'd have to consider the the fuel and the quantities. It, it, and, and yeah, that that comes down to the scale. Right. Um, I could see if we look at several neighborhoods that are near each other that are too far from a municipality doing a multi subdivision package plant that tries to treat those. Um, if, and I think in an ideal situation, if we can have municipalities willing to enter into these service districts without demanding annexation, <laughs> that would- What do you think, Wayne? <laughs> yeah. that, would be, that would be another opportunity. Now we would need to make it fair so that it's, it's equitable for them to give up their treat, treatment plant capacity for county properties. Um, and sometimes they do that by doubling the, the water rate or, or something like that. Um, we could also look at, given there are WIP credits to taking septics on the sewer, we could look at splitting those credits mm -hmm. a, as, as another way of, of sweetening the deal. So that, that won't work in all cases. Again, if you're really far away from, from a treatment plant, the amount of pump stations and the energy to run those uh, would probably kill it from an economic feasibility standpoint. Right. Uh, any other questions from anybody? Else? But, um, but with that, I think, yeah. I think at a later date, um, doing a more comprehensive presentation where we can touch on specific projects we've been working on and um, yeah, where we'd like to go in the future. Whenever, yeah, think. whenever you want to put it together, you okay. just let us know and we'll, um, we'll put it on the agenda for you. Okay, great. Great. We appreciate your time. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Have a Entertain a motion from council, if I could, to adjourn so we can go into closed session. So moved. Second. Second.
All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting's adjourned. Carl, thank